Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve first bad version, lead code number 278. So we're a product manager and we're currently leading a team to develop a new product. And unfortunately, the latest version of our product fails the quality check. And since each version is developed based on the previous version, well, all the versions after a bad version are also bad. So once it got bad, it was bad all the way there. So suppose you actually have N versions, they're calling it one, two, up to N, and you wanna find out the first bad one because we wanna find where the problem is. So this is the one that causes all the following ones to be bad. Well, we're given an API, which is just a function. It's a function that returns a bool, which is either true or false. So we have this function called is bad version that takes a version number and that'll return whether the version is bad. Now we need to implement a function to find the first bad version. And it's giving a little hint here, you should try to minimize the number of calls to the API and there is a good way to optimize that. Okay, so just to make sure we understand here. So if you have n equals five versions and the first bad version was version number four, by the way, that's not like a parameter to the problem because that's the thing you'd actually want to return. You'd want to return four because I mean, they're not actually showing it all here, but uh, is bad version of one and two and three would all be false because we're saying like, are those bad versions? No, they're actually good versions. And so is bad version on that would be false. Is bad version on four would return true because that is a bad version. And so it is on five. The first bad version would be version number four. So before we visualize the more optimal solution, I just wanna code up the brute force solution because it's pretty simple. You would just say for each X in the range, of one to n plus one. So in Python, this is just the integers of one to n because this is exclusive by one. So for each of these, if x is a bad version, aka if is bad version, you can see we have this code right here. So if is bad version on x, well, we're going in order starting at one. And so all of these are gonna be good up until you hit the first bad one. So this would be the first bad one when it hits. And so you just return x uh, and you're actually guaranteed that there's going to be a bad version. So so that's really all that you have to do there. And that's not going to pass the test cases because it's too slow. So these are all of our version numbers. And we know that all of these ones are okay. And the bad versions start happening here. And so you'd want to return this bad boy right here. So our brute force solution was essentially iterating this or going over this range from the start up until the end. So we're saying, is this a bad version? No, is this bad? No, all of these would be fine. Then we hit is bad version on eight. That would actually return true because that is a bad version. And so that's when we'd return eight there. But that's quite clearly an O of N solution here because you, know, you have N, this is your range here of N numbers and you are starting at the bottom and going and enumerating upwards. So when O of N doesn't pass the test cases, uh, really the only thing that's probably gonna do better is O of log N, where you end up kind of cutting it in half every time, which is why you get like a log base two of N solution. And that would be done in a binary search. So let's do that. Now, when we do this binary search, you don't actually enumerate and get all of these things here. Like we have these numbers on the screen, but you wouldn't want to collect those in code because that would be an O of N thing to do. Instead, what you would do is just kind of have the range here is that you'd have one pointer at the first number, which is one, that's the very first version, and the very last version is 10. So we'd have L on the first version and R on the last version. Okay, so in binary search, you would get your middle value, which is always going to be L plus R integer division by two. So that would be 11 over two, which is 5.5. 5.5 as just an integer would be five. So we have our middle value and we would just call our function. We'd say, is this a bad version? Uh, no, actually this version is just fine here. So we are looking for the first bad version. Well, if it's organized like this, a bunch of check marks, and then it's gonna be a bunch of X's starting at eight. Well, then we don't want any of this stuff here. That's where we get our log solution because we'd set L to be M plus one, basically killing all of this range here because we need to search over here. M plus one is well, M is five, so M plus one is going to be six. We do another iteration where we have L is M plus one, which is six. Now we're in a much smaller range of just six to 10. So let's remember that when we had a good version, I'll just call that GV there, good version. Well, that actually means that we should set L to be M 
plus one. That makes sense because we don't want a good version, we want a bad version. So we're explicitly past m to the right. So our next iteration, we get m is equal to eight. Now we know ultimately that's the thing that we want to return. Although we don't know that we're ready to return it yet, we can't just say eight. It's not like we found it. We didn't find anything because this is actually a secret to us. This is just kind of metadata for the problem. This is not actually input to us. We don't know that. So we need to make sure that we actually end up returning this in our algorithm. What we do know is that this is a bad version. We could call our function and it would tell us that it's a bad version. We want a bad version and we want the first bad version. So if the bad versions look like this, eight, nine, 10, basically, well, then you wouldn't want these ones, but you would want to keep this one. So we'd want to move R past all of these ones. And we also don't want to move it past M. We don't want to move R to be M minus one because over here, for all we know, this is a check mark, and it actually is, you know, seven, that would actually be a check mark, that is a good version. So we would want to skip over these ones. And we'd want to set r just equal to m. That way we know we're keeping a bad version. And we're keeping the one that's furthest on the left that we can, we can't go past this, but we can at least go up to it. And then we can search the rest of this range here. Okay, so we have six to eight. And let's write down that when we had a bad version. So when we had a bad version, we wanted to set r equal to m. And we would now look in this range here. So between six and eight, well, we know there's really only one thing there, m is equal to seven. And so is seven a bad version? Well, no, seven is a good version. When we have a good version, we already know we set l to be m plus one, we set l to be r in this case, which is m plus one. And now we're stuck at literally one value. When these two are equal to each other, that is when we actually get the result. Result. This is when we know we're done is when they're equal to each other because we forced it like this, it is going to be a big O of log, it's going to be base two of n where n is the input number. And let's code this up. Okay, so we set our bounds l is equal to one and r is equal to n, we do not actually create this range, we just want these two numbers. Now that we have these, we can start our search. So while well, our while condition was just while l is less than r, when they were equal to each other is when we actually want to leave. So we're only going to run this while l is less than r. Okay, we'd get our m, which is simply equal to l plus r integer division by two, we have an integer, which is the middle. So we can see say if is bad version on m. So if it is a bad version, this would return true. Well, when it's a bad version, we wrote down that we want to keep that it's a bad version. And so we don't want to lose that we just set r equal to m. However, if it's not, so if it is a good version, well, then we don't want a good version. So we'll move past those l is equal to m plus one to discard as many of those as we can, this will keep running. And eventually, we will get to the fact when we do hit the first bad version, and they're going to be equal to each other. So we can just return either L or R because they're going to be the same. If you run that, that is going to do the same thing in a log solution. Okay, so just to be clear, the time complexity here is going to be big O of log n and the space complexity here, it's just going to be constant. So big O of one space. I hope this was helpful, guys. Drop a like if it was and have a great day. Bye bye.